Hello, and welcome to the launch of the IEA's new Coal 2021 Market Report. I'm Jethro Mullen, Senior Editor in the IEA's Communications team. I'm joined today by our Executive Director, Dr. Fatih Birol, our Director of Energy Markets and Security, Mr. Keseke Sadamori, and Senior Energy Analyst, Mr. Carlos Fernandez Alvarez, who is also the lead author of the Coal Report. They're going to present the key findings and then take questions. For the journalists taking part in this press webinar, we invite you to submit your questions via the Q&A function in the Zoom. You can do this at any point during the presentation, starting now. With that, I'll hand over to our Executive Director, Dr. Birrell. Uh, thank you um, very much, uh, Jethro. Uh, uh, greetings to all the colleagues, uh, journalists, uh, friends, energy experts following this uh, webinar from the International Energy Agency headquarters in Paris. Uh, uh, dear colleagues, uh, you may know that uh, for each fuel, we have annual market uh, reports for oil, for gas, coal, renewables, efficiency uh, for uh, all of them. And today we are going to share with you some of the key findings and implications of those findings for coal, coal 2021. Uh, this report uh, analyzes the current coal markets and uh, makes forecasts until 2024. So what are the uh, trends that we are expecting and what are the uncertainties and what are the implications? And uh, this uh, report, uh, in my view, is the most comprehensive global coal analysis that is published anywhere in the world. So it's a, uh, a extremely good quality work, in my view. And as such, I would like to thank uh, uh, my colleague uh, Carlos Fernandez Alvarez and his team for carrying out uh, this uh, analysis, this data mining exercise, and also policy implications under the direction of my colleague, uh, Mr. Uh, Sadamori. And uh, I believe uh, this report comes at a, a very good time, uh, at least two reasons why very good. One of them is at the COP26 uh, meeting, uh, we uh, heard a lot of discussions about coal, rightly so, coal being the largest emitting uh, energy source. And the second, current energy market uh, context uh, is also important uh, to hear more about uh, coals today and coals uh, future uh, uh, tomorrow. Now, when I mentioned uh, Glasgow, the uh, COP meeting, uh, many countries uh, made uh, strong pledges to bring their emissions down. And the, uh, this is, uh, of course, this means that the coal is the largest uh, emitting energy source would need to go down if those pledges were to be fulfilled. However, our numbers, our analysis, the analysis of uh, my colleague uh, Carlos Fernandez Alvarez uh, shows that uh, there is a major gap between those pledges and what is happening today and what might be happening also tomorrow. And as such, I think this report is a, a sobering reality check of uh, the government uh, policies. Uh, the numbers are uh, really worrying when you look at it from a, a climate change uh, point of view. And uh, we expect uh, that uh, this year, coal, global coal demand to increase about uh, 6%. As such, the uh, global coal demand is uh, higher than 2019 before the COVID uh, crisis. There are uh, several interesting uh, findings in this report, but if I have to pick up uh, one, in my view, very telling uh, number, 
or finding, it is the following. The global electricity generation from coal this year will be the highest ever in the history. A global uh, electricity generation from coal is expected to increase about 9%. And as such, it is a historical uh, record. And it is coming from, driven by many countries, uh, China, Europe, United States, and India are the uh, largest drivers. In terms of percentage growth, the pace of growth, Europe is, among these countries, Europe is the uh, number one. And of course, uh, this is, uh, uh, in my view, uh, a very worrying uh, trend, especially when I look at uh, the next year and so on, uh, the, if the, we don't see a major change in the global economic expectations, we may see that the global coal demand, all the coal used in the uh, world, uh, may hit a historic high. This year, coal uh, electricity generation and next year, the entire coal use may uh, hit a historic uh, high. It shows us that the coal and the emissions come from coal are stubborn. They don't pay attention to what the governments say, what the experts say, what the uh, what the, uh, the wishful thinkings are, they are very stubborn. And coal is, of course, especially in electricity generation, it is the uh, most important uh, emitter. About 30% of the entire global CO2 emissions come from the coal electricity generation. If you want to compare, for example, cars, we have all the cars in the world, are responsible about 9% uh, of global CO2 emissions and coal uh, power generation uh, CO2 emissions make about uh, 30%. Now, this is, of course, uh, worrying and there are reasons for that. I am sure my colleague, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Sadamori, will go into the reasons uh, there. But I would like to also uh, reiterate uh, one uh, information I share uh, with, the, uh, with the press and uh, with the colleagues, with the uh, audience a few weeks ago. Uh, given the significant importance of coal uh, and the critical uh, role that coal plays in the electricity markets, uh, we have decided that we are going to come up with a report uh, call to net zero by 2050. Uh, many of you may uh, remember our landmark report we made this year, we published this year in May, global uh, net zero report for the energy sector. We will this time focus in this study, in which is going to come up uh, in uh, June next year, how we can bring the coal, to, coal emissions to net zero. So uh, this is a major challenge because we will look at this issue also, in fact, I should say in particular, from the perspective of the emerging and developing countries where you see coal might be playing a critical role providing electricity and keeping the, uh, the uh, affordability of the electricity prices. So this report will be coming in uh, June uh, next year. And uh, I am very happy that the, uh, the, the, the author of this, uh, the current Call 2021 study, uh, my colleague Carlos, uh, will be a key uh, player uh, making this report together with my other colleagues. Uh, with this uh, sobering uh, news information, but also uh, telling you that we will come up with a report uh, looking at the way out, uh, I would like to give the uh, floor to uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Keske Sadomari, 
who is the Director of Energy Markets and uh, Security. Mr. Sadamori, please. Thanks, uh, Dr. Biro. Uh, good morning, afternoon, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for attending this webinar to present the uh, Coal 2021 report. The China's influence on coal market cannot be overstated, and there is nothing similar for any other country in any other field. The coal power plants in China accounts for one-third of global coal consumption. Total coal consumption in China accounts for more than half of global coal demand. China and India combined account for two-thirds of the global coal use. So all the 200 countries in the world combined consume half of the coal consumed by only these two countries, China and India. This is a very particular feature of coal. Coal is concentrated in Asia, but specifically in these two countries. China is also the largest producer of coal and the largest coal importer in the world. The chart on the right shows the comparison between coal used in power generation in China and oil used in transportation in the United States which is the second largest single source of energy consumption. And you can see that the coal for China, coal for power in China is double of oil for transport in the United States. The drop of global coal demand by 4.4% in 2020 was substantial, the largest in decades. The year 2021 is not finished yet, so there are some uncertainties with respect to weather conditions and other factors. With that caveat, we expect the coal, global coal consumption to increase 6% in 2021, surpassing 2019 levels. As you can see, growth is expected in all major coal consuming regions of the world, including the United States and the European Union. In the coming years, what we see is a small growth to enter a plateau with growth mostly in developing Asia being offset by declines in the United States and the European Union. Those uh, following the IEA coal report series will notice that this is a continuation of a decade trend, a flattening line with annual fluctuations owing to market and economic conditions. This trend will come back after the interruption from the drop and rebound by COVID in 2020 and 2021. Indeed, the economic growth, weather conditions, or quick policy interventions can change the forecast. Power generation is the main driver of coal demand as it consumes two-thirds of global coal. In 2019, global coal power generation declined despite robust economic growth. This led to a hope that uh, 2018 could have been the peak of coal power generation. However, all the preliminary data we have, uh, we have indicates that the 2021 will set a new record for coal power generation, growing 9% up to 10,350 terawatt hours, higher than 10,130 terawatt hours in 2018. Annual growth of 850 terawatt hour in 2021 is the largest annual increase in coal-fired power generation by far, and that is much larger than the past record of 564 terawatt hour in 2010. Not only in China, India and other Asian countries, but also the United States and the European Union contributed to this record growth. After the big increase of this year, uh, coal power generation enters a plateau, and we estimate that 2022 is the peak. But weather and market conditions will determine which year from 2022 to 24 will actually have the peak. These bars on the screen also shows the radical change 
in the regional balance uh, through, uh, through this century. In the year 2000, US was the largest coal power generator and the EU was larger than India. Now, China and to a lesser extent, India dominate the scene. There are three uh, major factors behind the largest growth ever in coal power generation in 2021. First is the extraordinary electricity demand growth. Second, additional electricity from renewables and nuclear fell short to cover the entire electricity growth. And gas and coal fill the gap. Third, high gas prices led to competitive advantage for coal. From uh, 2021 to 24, we expect the low carbon sources of electricity to meet almost all the additional electricity demand. Coal and gas consumption growth in these three years combined will be 220 terawatt hours, and that's much lower than the growth in 2021 alone. The chart on the right shows the movement of spot gas prices in US, Asia, and Europe, usually more volatile than coal prices. The power system is complex as capacity is also an important factor and the supply must adapt to variable renewable generations and the changing demand. But when gas prices become high, fuel switching from gas to coal happens in power generation. If growth in low carbon generation sources is smaller than the entire electricity demand growth, gas and coal generation will step in. In that case, Gas prices generally determine the mix of gas and coal. The Chinese economic recovery actually started in 2020 with five quarters of very strong economic growth until some slowdown in the second half of this year. In line with it, coal consumption has been very strong. In the first quarter of 2021, for example, the coal consumption grew by over 15.15% compared with the same period, 2020. That growth has moderated, and we expect coal demand to decline in the final quarter of 2021 due to economic slowdown and, in particular, deceleration of heavy industries such as steel and cement. The coal demand in China is expected to grow by 4% in 2021, with the power sector as the main driver. Through 2024, we see a very slight increase, but China's coal demand forecast is very uncertain, with rainfall and hydro availability or the performance of the heavy industries being difficult to predict. Now, in India, the economy recovered from the second half of 2020, and this has pushed up power generation and heavy industries, and therefore coal demand. We see coal are growing through 2024 at 4% average annual growth, with coal power generation as the main driver, despite the big expansion of renewable capacity taking place in India. In 2021, we saw something surprising. Coal-fired power generation is expected to grow in the United States for the first time since 2014. And the growth, close to 20%, will be the highest ever recorded. In the European Union, we had a similar situation, despite the skyrocketing CO2 prices, but with record-breaking gas prices. But we need to put this in proper context. This growth in 2021 is only a partial recovery from the big drops happening in recent years. Even after the historical growth in 2021, coal power generation in 2021 will be 20% 20 lower <coughs> than in 2018. So the declining trend continues and we expect coal power generation and coal consumption to resume 
declining from 2022 onwards. Coal capacity retirements will also continue. So gas price will determine the exact pace of the decline in coal demand. When gas price goes down to more normal levels, coal will be quickly pushed out of the market, especially in the EU due to the high CO2 prices. <coughs> now we can see the trend of coal consumption. Given the slow progress of coal-based CCUS, CO2 emissions from coal follow the same trajectory. And this is a coal consumption required in the IEA net zero emission scenario. It is clear that coal consumption is well off track from the net zero emission trajectory. Despite the proliferation of net zero pledges and the coal phase out or phase down commitments, we do not see that the data in real life are aligned with such desires. The rebound in coal demand has given rise to a reaction on the supply side. In China and India, the governments have intervened to relieve the coal shortage, as this led to an electricity supply shortage and disrupted the general economy. In the last quarter of the year, with supply increasing and demand slowing down, coal shortages were over. The reaction of export-oriented countries to high prices were not so strong because of bad weather and lack of new capacity. In our forecast, coal production increases in 2022 to reach all-time high, to decline a bit through 2024. China will be the main driver here, but we need to keep eyes as well on India, where the commercial mining out of the Coal India's monopoly may bring new dynamism. Now, after the lows in the second quarter of 2020, the coal prices started its recovery to hit all-time highs in October of this year, 2021. Uh, we, uh, there were three main factors. The demand-supply imbalance in China, the supply disruptions in major exporting regions, and on top of them, high gas prices. They have supported coal prices as most of the time in most of the regions, coal was more competitive than gas. The, although the spikes in coal prices were very high, the average price level is close to that in 2018. So we can say that what has been extraordinary was variability rather than levels in coal prices. Indeed, uh, 2020 and 2021 have been very special, as very low demand in 2020 and very high demand in 2021 have shaken the market completely. In November, coal prices had lost half of the increase from $50 per ton in June 2020 to $250 per ton in October of 2021 as prices had fallen down to $150 by mid-November. Policy intervention in China to balance its market has been the major driver. And China is the price setter at the global level with other dynamics driving regional disparities. Looking at the drivers of coal prices, we see that the Chinese coal production growth failed to catch up with its demand growth especially from March to July. These imbalances led to major shortages in coal and power supplies. Likewise, in India, high prices in the international markets constrained imports, which added extra pressure on domestic supplies. Coal and subsequent power shortages made the governments to react to ramp up production and end shortages. Prices reacted accordingly. The price rally was fueled also by a variety of unavailability across the largest coal exporters. Indonesia, the largest coal exporter, were hit by heavy rainfall that hampered mining operations for a large part of the year. Lack of heavy equipment was an obstacle for production increase, and there were other small issues. Now, finally, the, in 2021 and 2022, 
all-time highs for global coal consumption, global coal-fired coal power generation, coal production, and coal prices happened or likely to happen. Given the slow progress on CCUS, coal-related CO2 emissions follow almost perfectly the coal consumption. And this is a reality we see as of today, six years after the Paris Agreement was signed. To finish, I would like to echo our executive director's words and remind you that in June 2022, the IEA will present a coal net zero report with practical recommendations for the coal sector to contribute to a net zero energy system. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for that presentation. Uh, we now have some time to take questions from journalists. Uh, and in that uh, sense, we invite the journalists to uh, submit their questions via the Q&A function in the Zoom, uh, if they haven't done so already. Uh, we're just going to take a couple of minutes to review the questions we have received, um, and then we'll come back to you uh, with answers. Uh, we'll be back shortly. Thank you. Hello, welcome back. So thank you very much uh, for your questions. Uh, we're going to start with one from uh, Megan Rowling from the Thomson Reuters Foundation. She is asking, how do the findings of this report square with the Glasgow Climate Pact decision to phase down coal? 
Uh, and based on the IEA, IEA report today, when can this actually start to happen? And is it important for governments to agree a collective date or dates for that? Uh, in the same vein, we have a question about the IEA, our planned report uh, for next year. Um, can you provide more details on the new coal net zero report you're releasing next year? Uh, do you think it can make a difference for coal emissions, especially from emerging economies? Uh, we also have a question on European policies. Uh, despite Europe's strong climate policies, why has European coal use increased so strongly in 2021? And then the last question we're going to take here is um, on the outlook for 2022. Uh, what are the main uncertainties uh, for coal use uh, in 2022? Uh, so I think uh, our executive director, Dr. Beryl, is going to take the first couple of questions about the Glasgow Climate Pact and the IEA report. Dr. Beryl. Uh, thank you very much for uh, these questions. Yes, uh, you are right. In Glasgow, there were lots of discussions were related to uh, use of coal today and uh, also for uh, tomorrow. And in fact, a, a bitter uh, memory of the uh, last rounds of uh, negotiations in Glasgow was, are we going to use a wording uh, phase out of coal or phase down uh, of uh, coal? And it seems that those discussions, when you look at the uh, numbers today, uh, seems to be not very relevant because what we see, neither down nor out, it is, it is up. Uh, and uh, if we don't change our policies, uh, we may well see that the next year, uh, with the economic growth expectations uh, we have in hand, we may see again an increase in uh, global coal uh, use. So, uh, therefore, there is a very stark contrast between the discussions there and what is happening in the uh, real life. It is the International Energy Agency's job at this meeting, so to remind the governments, uh, the uh, players in the market and the uh, interested uh, citizens uh, to show whether or not government's pledges, government commitments are in line with what they are doing uh, in life, what is happening in the real energy markets. So, uh, uh, therefore, uh, we, this is the reason we wanted to come up uh, with this uh, report, the uh, coal, bringing coal emissions to net zero by 2050. And as my colleague, uh, Mr. Sadawari, just uh, mentioned, coming up with this practical, suggestions to uh, governments uh, around the world, how we can do that. It is uh, easier in the advanced economies, such as in Europe, such as in the North America and elsewhere, but it is a very challenging task in many emerging countries. As, uh, it, in many countries, it constitutes an uh, important part of the electricity uh, generation. And some of them are uh, young uh, power plants. And our analysis show that even today, if we don't build any single new coal plant for the next 30 years, the existing ones we have around the world, especially in the emerging markets, uh, if they operate uh, in line with the normal uh, their economic lifetimes, we may well see that the emissions coming from the existing plants alone will eat up half of the emissions budget to reach 1.5 degrees Celsius. Half of it will be uh, gone. So it is the reason we want to come uh, with this uh, report making practical suggestions for the emerging uh, uh, countries, especially how they can phase out uh, their uh, coal uh, plants without having uh, major economic uh, headwinds and without hampering the electricity security. Talking about uh, uh, Glasgow, uh, one good example was uh, with uh, South Africa. Uh, several uh, advanced economies uh, 
uh, are aiming to support the uh, South African energy sector in order to reduce the use of coal. It is a first example, but a good example. And our report, uh, uh, working together with the emerging countries, uh, financial institutions, and the energy sector, hopefully will come up with some practical and real world uh, suggestions. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Dr. Birrell. Uh, and we'll now pass the next question on European climate policies to uh, Mr. Sadamori. Okay, thank you. Uh, the European coal use rebounded uh, from the very low level, decline level, uh, due to the COVID-19 in uh, 2020. And uh, this is because uh, the electricity uh, demand recovered very strongly. And uh, renewable is growing very fast. Uh, renewable actually grew, according to our renewable market report, that it continued to grow, even in the difficult uh, 2020. But still, uh, the increased renewable and the other low carbon generation did not uh, catch up with the entire electricity uh, demand growth. So natural gas and coal fired power generation had to uh, fill the gap. Now, in terms of the relationship between these two fuels, uh, the, as we all know that uh, European gas prices increased quite, uh, quite high. And therefore, the coal uh, became more cost competitive against the natural gas, despite the, uh, the high uh, the CO2 emission prices of the, by the European policies. And therefore, uh, the, the fuel switching uh, from uh, natural gas to coal, they happened. But uh, the, as uh, we explained in our presentation, uh, the, we have to understand that this is a kind of a temporary increase in the longer term trend of uh, decline uh, the, uh, in Europe. And uh, the, even though uh, we saw strong growth in 2021, uh, the, but the, 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 the level did not reach the pre-COVID uh, 2019 level. And we expect that uh, the European coal demand will come back to the uh, declining trend uh, going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sadamori. Uh, and the final question um, is about uh, uncertainties uh, surrounding next year. Obviously, the report mentions that uh, overall global coal demand could reach an all-time high next year. Um, but uh, it's still a could, um, and so I'm going to pass uh, to uh, Mr. Alvarez um, to explain what the uncertainties are for that, for that forecast. Mr. Alvarez. Thank you very much <coughs> for the question. I think uh, to answer this, uh, the best uh, way to do it is to think uh, why, because last year in uh, cold 2020, uh, the forecast uh, for the growth of coal demand was 3% and, and however will be double. Uh, why? Basically for three reasons. First, uh, economic growth was uh, higher than, than we expected. <clears throat> Second, the weather conditions uh, were, uh, on the one hand, in the demand side, there were some uh, cold uh, snaps in some regions and, and in winter and uh, hot uh, waves in summer that increase uh, electricity demand that is the main the main source of growth on coal de uh, demand and uh, very important as well uh, high gas prices that uh, my, my director has uh, already mentioned in, in europe so i think uh, this is like the pattern <coughs> to see uh, uh, how uh, things can change for 2022 so first of all um, china responsible for 55% uh, of uh, global coal demand. So economic growth in China will be key to uh, define the real uh, coal consumption. Then the weather conditions can change uh, and also uh, gas prices. Um, we, we see these days uh, uh, the market uh, kind of uh, volatile. So, so we need to, to check, you know. And, and indeed, uh, economic growth in other places, India, indeed, and, and elsewhere, can also can also change this forecast. Uh, we need also to think that uh, the main industrial uses for coal are steel uh, uh, and cement. 
So, so this is very related with the economic development and, and, and infrastructure uh, uh, development. So I think I will, I will leave it at this. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fernandez. Um, and thank you to all of our presenters um, today. Thank you to the journalists for your questions. And thank you to everyone uh, following the event online uh, for your interest. Um, the full report, uh, Coal 2021, is available for free on our website. So please do go take a look. Um, and if any journalists have any questions that didn't get answered during the Q&A, uh, we invite you to reach out to our press office uh, to clarify those. Um, and finally, um, we'd like to thank you. Uh, since this is the last uh, press conference by the IEA this year, it's been a very busy year. Um, thank you for, for following along and your interest in our work. Um, we wish you all the best for the end of year holidays and a happy and healthy new year. Thank you and goodbye.